Hey everyone, yesterday I showed off a video on the uh, Sega Game Gear Collectors group on Facebook of my TV tuner back in action and a lot of people had uh, some questions about how I did that considering analog TV has been dead for many years now and uh, I alluded to a project I'm working on where I'm going to make my own television station and I'm here to debut that. So. Um, here it is. I wrote an app that looks like a TV remote. It's supposed to look like a TV remote. Uh, it's still a work in progress. But here, check this out. I'm going to turn on my game gear. And I'm going to turn on this CRT also because you'll just see a better image. Here we go. Pull out my phone, hit the power button. Wait a couple seconds. There we go. So there you have it. A little TV remote. Watching some Sonic the Hedgehog here. I can uh, play and pause. I can skip ahead. I can even skip to the next episode. Not only that, I have a channel changing function that basically just switches through playlists that I've made. Sonic the Hedgehog. Star Trek The Next Generation. Super Mario Brothers 3. Let's move this over a bit. Let's see. What else have we got? Legend of Zelda. And I'd like to see if I can get some like channel changey static happening between the videos. I um, I have a few ideas of how I might do that. So yeah, anyway, you get the idea, but I'm going to go through them all. And uh, this is running on a Raspberry Pi. Um, Cosmos, of course. So this is, there you have it, like 80s, 90s television back in action again all wireless in case we're not clear about that all right this is a tv with an antenna nothing nothing plugged into it and i'm simply just using the uh, component output on a raspberry pi going into a uh, television transmitter that i picked up off ebay and then on the raspberry pi i wrote a simple uh, web server in node JS and a front end in view. So once again, play pause. Oops, <laughs> accessibility zoom. <laughs> Can also adjust the volume. Can almost do it all. So yeah, I plan on improving on the remote a bit. It's an open source project. I'll be throwing it up on GitHub. You can find me on GitHub under the username Shake with three S's. S-S-S-H-A-K-E. Um, hold on, we gotta, gotta pull up some reboot before we go. So yeah, in case you didn't catch it at the beginning, the power button actually turns the transmitter on and off. I am, uh, there you go, it's actually off, and I'll show you how that works. I'm up in my retro computer room, it's the coolest room in my entire house. Quick tour. Cool, and up here, this is where the magic happens, this is a uh, TV transmitter uh, just takes power, has an antenna, and it just takes component and uh, uh, mono audio in. So down here, this mess of wires, this is a Raspberry Pi. It's actually just a Raspberry Pi 1. I had one laying around 
and uh, you can see I can plug audio and video in right here. Uh, here is a Pi 3 in a Famicom case, and you can see uh, same deal. It's got analog audio and video. The power for the transmitter I have plugged into a smart plug, and on the smart plug I it's a Samsung smart plug, but I think you could probably use just any modern smart plug and connect it up to ifttt.com. And on there, I made a web hook that my app uses to turn this smart plug on and off. As I can demonstrate here, when I push the power button on my remote, it turns the TV transmitter off. So now I've got fully automatic uh, use from my virtual remote. All right, hope you enjoyed it, thanks. All right, before I go, I just wanna plug some of my stuff. Let me ask you something. Are you tired of this new internet yet? You know I am. Time to get the old net. Head on over to theoldnet.com and get your fill of classic 90s internet. This is not just a vanity site, this is a functional website. In addition to that, I make some uh, old school connectivity solutions. So for one, I make this serial Wi-Fi modem. This plugs into a serial port on one of your vintage computers. It connects to your Wi-Fi network and it allows you to use some functionality of the internet on retro computers. In addition to that, if you have a Sega Dreamcast and you want to get it online, you might need one of these. This is a line voltage inducer for connecting your Dreamcast modem to a Raspberry Pi. The reason why you need this is there's no voltage without a telephone network. This accomplishes that. You plug a 9-volt battery into here, you plug your telephone line in here, and voila, you have an active phone line. So now you can get online, play Fantasy Star, play Quake 3, play Unreal Tournament. All right, have fun, guys.